We're good, we're good now. All right. Uh, welcome to the ordinance meeting of Wednesday, January 10th. Um, and as you can see, we have a new ordinance committee at this point after the uh, elections, and I've been returned to the uh, chair position. Um, so I will make note for the role that we have Councillor Seidler, Councillor Hamill, and Councillor Katarina here. Um, the approval of minutes from October 12th, that's going to be a good one because I was absent from that meeting. April was the only one there and Dawn wasn't on ordinance. No, I read the minutes. They look <laughs> fine to me, but I can't, I that's can't okay. vote because I... Uh, uh, you weren't on the committee. Yeah. And I wasn't there, but we'll go ahead and approve them anyway. Okay. I mean, I, I was there and I read them and they think right. that they accurately reflect the, the content of the meeting. So right. I will go ahead and make a motion to approve the minutes. And I'll second it. And go ahead and we'll say two of us approve. Okay. All right. Now, what's different with uh, Jean Marie in charge is I do all public comment in the first 15 minutes, if it takes 15 minutes of the meeting, and then we go right into meeting and all public comment ends at that point. My suggestion to folks is if you can't make the meeting, that's fine. Um, they will be hybrid, so um, you can comment. On, online, can you comment online, Liam? Because I know we're using the owl, and I've yeah, I've never run a meeting with that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, my other um, recommendation is I know I appreciate emails even more so than speaking um, from the audience because I get a chance to read it, digest it. So you know, emails before meetings are helpful for us also. So with that being said, do we have anyone who would like to, where do we want the public to speak? Anyone here want to make a public comment? In the vicinity of the owl. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think the owl could probably pick up fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah so okay. They can just All raise right. their hand. Anyone here wish to make any comment on anything on the agenda? No? Okay, anyone online? No? Okay. So we will move from public comment to 2024 Ordinance Committee Future Agendas. Uh, I know we spoke, we had a, a, a brief meeting and we spoke about a number of uh, issues. Biggest one is uh, cannabis and what we're going to do about cannabis establishment licensing and, and everything around that. Um, and that is the next item on the agenda excuse me, on the agenda. We also um, had talked, and I, I bear with me, I'm looking at scribbled notes here. Um, there was something from folks from Avenue 4 regarding parking, and the manager um, told me that that's going to come forward with traffic ordinances. Is that correct, Mr. Yes. Hall? Yes. Um, and I feel like I'm, I'm going to... Go to Mr. Assistant Town Manager. What what else did we yeah, discuss? Um, Cannabis again, was the sounds big like one. Councilor Hamill may add to this list. But yeah. The, um, we uh, do envision there's a C pace program mm -hmm. uh, that was discussed in October yeah. of last year. That was kind of that was continued. Uh, there's also uh, from the, the town engineer there will be some yeah. there's some request on our uh, parking ordinance. I believe that traffic ordinance right. that was discussed and then uh, tabled uh, a lot of items out of um, planning, uh, yeah. including, uh, uh, again, changes, proposed changes to 405. Um, there's an environmental standards from Conservation Commission that we expect to come forward in February. Uh, commercial design standards. Is, is, yeah, um, that was a big one. That's another one we expect in February. Yeah. Um, and then additional kind of more um, perhaps consequential or, or uh, interest, interesting subjects. Food trucks is something that has come up. Uh, probably the biggest one that's garnered a lot of uh, response from the community, short-term rentals. We expect to come yes. back to ordinance for some that's discussion. Correct. Uh, Thank you. Residential districts and density is something that's going in uh, home business definitions for all items that the yes. planning director uh, put on the proverbial radar for this community to take up. <clears throat> yeah. um, in a conversation with staff today, um, I know that uh, specifically our um, 
traffic or parking ordinance. Um, I think that that's something where for a long time the, the feeling has been that that's a, an ordinance that could use quite a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. um, I think that efforts to make changes has, has been impacted by just feeling like, you know, do you do it piecemeal or do you kind of do one fell swoop? I think the feeling is that it's probably easier as uh, time has, as staff has availability to do that piecemeal. So I expect that may be something that uh, happens in segments. So over the course of the next year, I expect uh, that ordinance to receive a number of different agenda items. Do you mind, do you remember off the top of your head what some of them were just for the public so they'll know the sort of things that are coming forward? Looking at the, looking at the audience. Yeah. Uh, the three areas that I expect will come forward uh, quite quickly in the first quarter of this year, uh, they're all within tra the traffic ordinance 601. Uh, the first would deal with parking on the east side of East Grand Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, as was mentioned, Avenue 4, there's a question of parking. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest, probably cleanup one, is that ordinance is littered with speed limit regulations. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that DOT, and we've known this, sure. uh, determines the speed limits. and so. Uh, we're looking to really clean up the ordinance by removing any local reference to the ordinance and referring folks to DOT um, for that information. So that will be coming fairly soon in the near year, if you will. Okay. And will, I think, serve a pretty good purpose of cleaning the ordinance up. Uh, okay. Not entirely, but. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Hamill. I'd like to add to this the traffic ordinance. I think that the last time that we went through a formal review, at least I've in my experience, I went through it with Larissa Crockett one time, I think it was 2018, 2019, and it was, you know, I would agree it's, it's, it's uh, out of date and pretty gnarly, and it's been added on year after year. Yeah. I provided some feedback to uh, the Ordinance Committee and also to Chief Holmquist concerning the easterly uh, parking that's permitted on East Rand Avenue, which doesn't make any sense because there's no right of way, there are no parking spaces, there's a bike lane, other than that, it's a great place to park uh, if, if you get permission, which isn't given by people to park on their property. Right. So that needs to be taken care of. Yeah. Since then, it's gone, you know, subterranean. I've lost no, you know, I've lost complete sight of it, and I don't know when it's going to resurface, but I did want to mention last night there was uh, and this is directly related, the Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee had a very extensive discussion about the issue of parking. I know, Tom, you've been involved in this with us, specifically as it relates to requests by, by Vinny and Sue Bailey Cloud to renegotiate the, the parking lease that oh, was right. agreed mm -hmm. upon in, in yeah. 2019 when they purchased the co-op. So uh, that's one issue, but there were several other issues that that committee was asked to develop a position on. They're in the process of doing that. They had a first pass last night and what I thought was a very good start. Uh, it wasn't ready for prime time. They didn't vote it out of committee. They're going to take another pass at it the next month. But it, in, it includes, I, I've heard about this Avenue 4 yeah. petition. I haven't seen it. Yeah. I have a fairly good ear to the ground on things like that. I understand it's a, a group of people that just don't want any parking on Avenue 4. Yeah, really, apparently there's a, a few parking but, spaces. But, but, I, I couldn't get it all to But I've had no there. personal, oh. you know, uh, contact with anybody about that, but I've heard <clears> it not being around. Uh, so that's something that uh, will require uh, some discussion. The parking thing we thought was going to be tr try to have it focused on the, the parking lot down at the co-op, which is protected mm -hmm. by the covenant that uh, the town signed when the pier was built, uh, working waterfront cover, and that has requirements, you know, for the town to maintain to maintain that facility and parking and access. Uh, the other thing I would say related to that is they're going to look specifically at Herd Park, and they're also going to be uh, looking at broader scope of parking as it relates generally in Pine Point, mm -hmm. up up to the bridge, you know, so going uh, on the Pine Point Road up to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, westerly, I guess that is, and easterly, uh, you know, uh, to the parking on the east side of East Grand Avenue, and then toward Old Orchard Beach mm -hmm. to the line, mm -hmm. to the property line, including the other streets down to the point. Uh, but there seems to be, uh, they, they have a, a very specific recommendation, they're trying to tighten it up, and my expectation is it would come next to either the council or to the ordinance committee. Uh, but that that'll be ready to go in another month or so and Marvin correct me if I'm wrong but that's kind of what I recall from what we covered okay yes, all right that's good oh, that's good to know okay thanks 
I had two other things as it relates to other potential issues within scope for the owners committee. I assume that's what we're going to yeah, talk yeah, we're talking, about. Yeah, we're talking about future in. agendas. And yeah, I don't want to suck all the oxygen out of the no, room, no. but one, one of those things, uh, Tom, this just came into our email yesterday, uh, was something from the state having to do with FEMA floodplain oh, right. maps. You know, <laughs> a long assignment for us to basically... Appropriate today, yeah. Yeah, good time. <laughs> Great timing, the witching hour. So, uh, you know, this is obviously it's something that has a pretty intensive timeline associated with it. Six months. Mm -hmm. The recommendation is for us to adopt in whole what they're recommending as the ordinance, yeah. um, which I'm assuming you know would be a topic for discussion for us. Um, but I, you know, I saw that right before we went into the Coastal Waters committee and what was yeah i saw said, something yeah i remember yeah, quiet, seeing that and i wasn't sure yeah quite yeah. a week before before today because this has been going on for quite yeah. a while i mean fema put out the maps then they were put on hold and then they were put out again and then municipalities sued and then they pulled them back so this has been going on for how many years six or seven six or yeah. seven yeah so i mean there's been a lot of buzz in general about fema maps i think goes back several years to uh, yeah. when there was a community meeting you know it's yeah. Higgins Beach obviously yeah. uh, was affected dramatically by the, the the storm, but Pine Point is you know will be neck and neck with Higgins in terms in the of marsh, anywhere around the marsh, marsh you know, any of those areas around the marsh. And, and, around the marsh, and the impact. So, yeah. so naturally, there's a high level of interest uh, yeah. in those issues, you know, not not yeah. only for the folks that live in Pine Point, but yeah. but also the rest of the town. Uh, okay. And there were other groups that have tried to get organized around various meetings, but have not really hmm. been able to pin that down yet. But I do know there is also interest not only at a state legislative level, but also way beyond that. Guess what? It's an election year, so people are looking for meetings to attend. <laughs> don't want to be in so. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's okay. pretty much all I had. No, uh, that's, that's enough. I mean, what was otherwise going to be? This is a classic example of kind of what happens when you think it's going to be hopefully a normal year. There's oh, there's always there's something. So, always something. So, April, did you? No, nope. everything that I remember that got held over from the previous committee and work that we had started in the fall has already been mentioned. So I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Good. I did have yeah. one more thing here, <laughs> and this may appro more appropriately be a finance committee okay. issue. Okay. But, it, and I've mentioned this uh, from time to time in various meetings uh, with the council. And this is really for us to revisit the, the TIF and um, CEA agreements, you know, for us to really uh, get a better handle on planning and reporting, cost benefit well, analysis, yeah. safeguarding the yeah. public monies, clawback provisions, that's independent finance. review, public input, sunset finance. provisions. And so forth. Finance. Yeah. So, but I. So I, yeah. I guess we'll yeah. be doing that in tandem, or at least bounce. Well, back as you know, nothing forth. operates in a vacuum, right. and anything that we take up, you know, it'll be related to sustainability or conservation or or somebody. It's going to impact somebody. So, but the reason I wanted to put this out here, as far as the future agendas, was just to give the public an idea of some of the topics. That are at least coming up until they get pushed away by something sure. else. Known issues. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those are the known known issues and known topics <clears throat> at the moment. And also, uh, just to remind people that this has been a change. Ordinance has been on Thursdays for quite a while, so it's been moved to Wednesday, the second Wednesday of every month at six o'clock, and it will be in the public safety building after this meeting. If I I'm looking at Mr. Gallagher because he's the one who, guy who yes. had to find a space. So, thank and you I, for doing that. And I know we've done this. I know I know we went through this with appointments, and there was a, a need to have meetings stacked back to back, two or three meetings. And uh, you know, I'm, I appreciate the committee was able to accommodate a schedule conflict that I had. It's yeah. the first time in five years I've ever requested <laughs> that I there know. be a change to an agenda for to accommodate my schedule. And, and, and I appreciate the. I'm happy to do that for you. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> I'm going on meeting number three. I'm feeling <laughs> great. <laughs> She's the triple headers are right. Well, we, we expect to wear you down and have you know, exactly where you want you by the time this meeting. Is All right. Uh, now, oh, cannabis. 
Boy, Dawn and I lived through cannabis, as did some of the audience, for quite a while see, there. This was an 18 <laughs> month experience that G Marie and I had. And I think that when I started on the council, we weren't exactly friends. Um, I think it's a safe <laughs> statement. But, but in that experience, I learned that we were very effective working together. Yes. I think we yes. got Ken Johnson for a while. Yeah. Oh, Paul, yeah. Paul Johnson, maybe, then Ken. Uh, yeah, I can't remember but, now. Yeah, it took a year and a half. All I remember and is this came in very handy sometimes. Uh, so the audience members, I'm like, be quiet. So you, know, I, I, uh, you know, sometimes yeah. the issues select you rather than the other way around. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. pleased that we have another cut at it. And yeah. I, I'm confident we'll be fair yeah. and objective. Yeah. Um, I'm, so let's move on to cannabis. And I apologize if I slip and say marijuana from time to time. I have 68 We're years on of, it. of saying marijuana. So to switch my brain to cannabis. Um, so the reason this is back on the agenda, it's been a long, you know, it's been in effect, the, the state laws <laughs> that legalized it, and the state, in my opinion, made things messier than it needed to be, but that's not unusual with the bifurcation between medical use and recreational and this and that and the other thing. Um, so as a town, we made the decision that we would allow for cultivation and manufacturing and not retail. And part of the reason that we put in the not retail, if I'm remembering correctly, and please, you know, step in, either of you, if you, if you had felt differently, was it was a vote for the legalization, and Scarborough was way against the legalization. So, you know, it was more... It was as much, there was just a sense in town that people didn't want retail. So that's where that came from. So why we're back here is now we've had the experience of working with cannabis and cultivators and manufacturers and whatever. Um, and there have been issues that have come up and it seems that the, to me, the, the the, the most consistent issue has been odor. And Pine Point has been s singled out to some point for a long time, but there have also been issues with Pleasant Hill area. Um, so we're coming back together to look at, should we do something? If so, what should we do? What's working, what's not? And how do we address it? Um, am I, do you think I'm giving the right thing, Mr. Gallagher, since you've been the yep. cheerleader here and <laughs> run the show on a, on a lot of the issues? So um, I was involved in a telephone conversation with our attorney, Phil Saucier, who um, was not able to be here. Uh, I, think he ha I think he had a school board meeting. He's a school board person in, in another town. Um, but he wrote a memorandum for us on, you know, what state law is, what the cannabis establishments are. I did have it posted <coughs> publicly. I hope that people had a chance to look at it. If you didn't, they are posted with our notes. So, you know, it's it comes under, um, you know, our regulation. I don't know. I'm I'm going to toss this to Mr. Cat. Oh, I'm sorry, Just Mr. Hall. Yes, go ahead. I want the committee and the public to appreciate that we're also in a period of a moratorium. Oh, yes. right. Thank so you. Really Thank you for reminding me of that. I mentioned that this is time bound. Right. And uh, that's why this issue, I think, is uh, specifically on your agenda, and it does need some very yes. attention. When does the moratorium end, Mr. Hall or Mr. Gallagher? February 15th. Okay. Give or okay. take a day or two. Okay. And the moratorium specifically is? The Pine Point Overlay District for any new licenses or expansion of existing cultivation facilities. Okay. Can I throw this back to you, Mr. Gallagher? Because you're way more prepared than I am um, today. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I think just to, to just give a little bit more background on anyone who's turned, tuned into an ordinance committee meeting or a council meeting, you know, my, my sort of preface notes have been fairly consistent. Um, the, this, the most recent history around the, the licensing ordinance has really uh, came about a, about a, a year ago, February of, of 23, when um, some some really consistent uh, outcry from uh, residential abutters to uh, cultivation facilities in town really expressed continued concern with the odor that was really 
in violation of the ordinance, reading it literally, in that it uh, went beyond the, the property boundary. And um, out of that, uh, a, a working group comprised of staff and residents and uh, industry or, or industry folks and licensees came together to really focus and narrow their attention on um, really two components uh, surrounding odor. One, the kind of prescriptive odor standards that we, um, that we have in our ordinance, as well as um, what, uh, what the enforcement process was, again, within the licensing ordinance. And, and so some substantial changes uh, or, or noteworthy changes came through that work and were approved by council in August um, so again, uh, increasing the air exchange rates required for cultivation facilities, as well as adopting a far more comprehensive and, and, and what I would characterize as progressive enforcement process. Um, in, in coordination with that, uh, we, the council again in February of 23 enacted a, a uh, emergency moratorium on any new licenses or expansion of existing uh, cannabis facilities that was further narrowed in May of 23 to be um, essentially any cultivation or manufacturing facilities in the Pine Point Overlay District. And then the current moratorium in place was uh, limited to cultivation facilities in Pine Point. Um, that moratorium is due to expire again in the middle of February. So the council. I think at this point, um, and, and certainly one of the, the visions with those changes is you'd have more, the council would have more information uh, five or six months on to, to better understand whether those uh, odor mitigation standards, uh, what kind of the effect or impact was of those, um, as well as uh, certainly understand whether any licensee or facility was in, in an enforcement process. Um, and that hopefully that data and information would serve uh, to inform the council's next steps, which is, to, to the manager's point, really where we stand today. Um, the, the memorandum that legal counsel drew up really was uh, to discuss what the options could be, um, you know, certainly provide some background on licensing, state law, op the opt-in provisions as well as what the options kind of are from a, kind of specifically a, a land use <coughs> zoning, uh, standpoint. Um, and as the memo stipulates, it, it's, uh, it is a bit more complicated than a, than a kind of a standard zoning change and, and legacy right and non-conforming use um, with, when you're dealing with medical caregivers. Um, and so that's, that's sort of the, the background. I think um, what the council has to uh, try to grapple with is are they prepared to make any changes to the, to the uh, licensing ordinance? Are they uh, specifically zoning? Um, and in the interim, what steps does the council wish to take uh, to further understand uh, the data and, and make those decisions? Again, speaking very explicitly, does the council have any desire to continue a moratorium or a revised moratorium? Well, that is understood or, or contemplated. Um, so I think that's enough from me at this point. Um, okay. Questions for, from April or Dawn? Yeah, I, I had a couple questions. I, I know this is sort of a twofold issue that I have with where we are right now with with cannabis uh, in town, and I you know I think Gene recovered it well in terms of how we got here as it relates to manufacturing and cultivation in general and, and retail sales. But you know the the fact is that we did a couple of things. We we've done the moratorium work, um, and we developed a process. I think you referred to it, Liam, as a comprehensive monitoring process. I, you'd use some other language, but. The problem here is that the burden really is on the residents to do two things. You know, the residents have, have to actually prove that there are incidents of odor as it relates to cultivation, okay, which is, it, we have a very cumbersome process that has a lot, a lot of steps and it's just, it takes so much time and effort. It's just, I don't think, a reasonable expectation. I don't think it's a workable policy. It's certainly not 
not working if you ask the folks who live uh, next to uh, uh, the Pine Point Industrial Area, number one. Number two, the, we're, they're now, we're in this curious place of having them to prove that um, manufacturing does not produce odor. And in spite of that claim that's been made several times, um, people are still complaining about it. And not just in Pine Point, but also now in Pleasant Hill. So if you look at those things as indicators, they're, we're going in the wrong direction. So I, I think we need to, um, to take, step back and take a completely different approach to it and hopefully one that's, that's comprehensive. The thing I also would add is that I, you know, I read the memo from Phil Saucier. Um, it's the first time I've really heard about amortization. Mm. Um, that's a whole new concept for me. And it basically has to do with mitigating the financial impact of somebody that's built the license or has built the business. You know, I'm certainly sensitive to that, but the whole thing goes back to the fact that the, the reason why marijuana got into the you know, Pine Point industrial area is that we thought it made sense for those things to be allowed in industrial areas, in areas where there was already similar work going on. But the, but the other thing that happened is that um, I don't think people expected it to go across the street and to into a residential area. I went by there the other day. There are kids out standing for the bus in the morning. April has friends who live on Holly Street. There are other folks on Dickman Street, those two streets in particular. It, that should have never been part of, of the Pine Point Industrial District. Okay. And that somehow, and it was because of a GIS map error. And I I think for that reason alone, you know, the burdens on the town and also on the folks that are responsible for those technical areas to roll it back. I don't even know if that's possible, but that's my sentiment on the thing going in. Mr. Hall? I just, my recollection, Councillor, is that um, I believe the council had full awareness and understanding of what the zoning implications were at the time. Where we failed is to modify the zoning map accordingly to reflect that. And it did cause confusion. We've since corrected that, but it was my recollection uh, that the council was aware. Um, and I think it, had you known then what you know now, you may have reconsidered that. But at the time, I don't. My <coughs> recollection is that the council was aware that it did apply to this uh, overlay district, which included um, the area at the end of Hall Street. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, we are where we are, and I think we need to reckon with the facts that are in front of us. I will also add that the staff is committed to providing council um, a better understanding of, of all of the establishments that are under, currently under license in town. Um, and part of that exercise, which I think would be helpful to you, is to identify those, uh, to the extent we can, uh, operations that existed prior to December 13, 2018. I was going to ask you about that. That's just important for awareness that, uh, in spite of your wish to perhaps do something, State law will not allow us to affect the operations that existed prior to that date. So we just need to be aware of that as you deliberate mm -hmm. going forward. I, I'm perfectly comfortable, you know, following the rules as it relates to what's, you know, who's protected by the law. The thing that bothers me is that in this period of time where we knew there's a problem and we knew we were going to be revisiting it again as a committee and as a council, we doubled things up. We doubled up licenses for approval and we sped them through even though we knew that this work was coming along. So, uh, you know, this is just, you know, my personal point of view on it and I, uh, you know, accept the decision of the council on it, but that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And it's another example where we're hearing from the public that they want something and what we actually do officially is diametrically 180 degrees opposed to that. Well, I'm going I'm to counter that again. Um, it, it, it's the chair's prerogative. Uh, I don't think we deliberately do things that are in opposition to what people want. Sometimes what people want, we can't do. Or we can't act on. Like you heard this, anything prior to December 13th, 2018, we can't do anything about it because state law precedes. And the issue, if you may recall, with cannabis in the beginning was the state controlled it all and wouldn't let the towns do anything. And finally, they gave us the opt-in, opt-out, whatever. Um, so it's been, it's been a huge experiment for whatever reason. Um, I think it's failed when it comes to odor in, in many ways. Um, and, and 
again, we didn't know. We've never, you know, had this before in the state. So this, this is fairly new. So I see this as an opportunity to say what needs to be done because we do have an odor, you know, under our good neighbor uh, policy, an odor um, ordinance. But yet the right of people to, to have a business, and they've been running this business based on laws and rules and ordinances that allow them to do so. So, you know, that's that that's you know for us to weigh uh, as a as a council committee. I'm sorry, but I didn't nope. ask you first if you had something to say. No, that's okay. Um, no, the only other thing I would say. I think it would be helpful, and I don't know. Um, no. If we could pull together the licenses and the locations and when they were approved, and so we could just have a timeline, I think mm -hmm. would be helpful. Um, just because there is this narrative that all we've done is add and add and add, but I also have heard the assistant town manager remind us that when we have first reading, second reading, with a public hearing, and we need, and some of the um, caregivers need multiple licenses for the same operation mm -hmm. that it can kind of compound and becomes this monster um, you know thing that we've repeatedly passed and passed and so I think for me and and just maybe for the public's line of sight it would be good to have a list of what we've approved and when just to have a, a kind of comprehensive timeline that would be great and I suggest we do that all lines including uh, <coughs> Medical marijuana oh, right. licenses, Absolutely. the whole yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The, the point there is that we are approaching fifty odd licensees, yeah. uh, and in many in many cases there are multiple licensees under one roof, um, yeah. two, three, and four in some cases. So I think it would just be helpful to kind of. And as we have these discussions, up. I just I would like to know what the impact, you know, is in terms of how many people are in the same facilities. What are you know? How many neighbors have bought these facilities? Things like that, just to, and and not specifically. And Tom, I saw, I saw you raise your eyebrows, Tom. I don't literally mean I want you to count the houses. I just, in terms of the, you know, I, I'm not super familiar with the uh, Pleasant Hill facility. I know that we've recently started um, getting some odor complaints from that facility, and that has certainly not been the topic of conversation when we did the cannabis working group. You know, we didn't have a representative from anyone who lived over there. Um, and so that kind of adds another spoke on this wheel. And so I just, I think some familiarity with where the facilities are and how many licenses each facility carries would be would be helpful. Yeah, just, just you know, I, and in response to, to because again, I think I, during consular comments uh, a few meetings ago, there was this, I think there's this fatigue with, mm -hmm. with cannabis and and um, and sort of fatigue with cannabis related subjects being populating agendas. And you know, Chris and I sat down a few weeks ago and looked at just Pleasant Hill Court. So just as an example, right, one part of town, mm -hmm. uh, the Pleasant Hill Corridor uh, has six buildings that have cannabis establishments. Um, in those six buildings, there are nine, nine separate businesses. Um, it's essentially 20 licenses, because again, some of those businesses require multiple licenses. Of those businesses, four of them require food handlers licenses. So for these six buildings, there are 44 separate council, council actions, actions. Oh, to approve those nine businesses. Yeah. And, and so I think, and again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for a single minute <laughs> suggesting that we don't have some legitimate issues and ongoing challenges with, with uh, our cannabis establishments in town. We do. But I think that some of this fatigue is based on what the council has required for process. And, and so I, I, I think it might be important to separate that as a, as a concern because the, the council has, and even the ordinance, it doesn't require two readings of council. We've adopted that process to give line of sight and get public feedback on these establishments. And so, um, you know, that I guess I just offer that up as an anecdotal piece. I just think it's really important to speak to facts and just having any data, yeah. you know, and a timeline would be really. Important. I can give you a breakdown on some of that data if you'd like. Um, I don't necessarily have the timeline. 
Um, there's currently, including ones that are going through a process of, peer, of approval, we have um, 45 current licenses. 23 of that are cultivation licenses, which include medical and adult use. 22 are manufacturing licenses. And out of that 45, 36 of those are businesses that hold more than one license, as Leah mentioned. 18 of the licenses are in the Pine Point overlay, which include 14 cult cultivation and four manufacturing. So let me respond to, to the data there. I'd like to see it on paper. I know we talk through numbers when we're in meetings, and that's not the same as looking at a document and looking at the analysis and discussing that. But I appreciate, I know the work goes into this, it's additional staff work and it's gotta be tiring. So I appreciate there's fatigue all around. The biggest source of fatigue is people who have to live next door to this and it's mm -hmm. still an issue that has not improved, okay? And we've not done, and all the efforts you've taken have not succeeded in that. And I know we we're talking about, well, there's a certain number of handlers, they're just getting bigger and adding licenses. That means, well, let's look at the volume, let's look at the sales volume, let's look at the, right. you know, let's look at the numbers of what that business you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a half a dozen big businesses or, you know, um, four dozen individual ones that are, are grouped according to a couple of operators. If it's still expanding, that's, you know, the activity and the odor and the nuisance is being driven by that. So I think, you know, I, I, I think this is, you know, we're going to be fatigued about it. We're fatigued about it going in, but we're just going to have to power through it and I, I, we've talked about this approaching it from a zoning standpoint mm -hmm. versus approaching it, you know, another way, you know, through an ordinance or through our practices and moratoria and, and, and amortizations and those kinds of things. I, um, I'm open to process um, and direction on this, but I think we need to be very critical about analyzing what we think is going to deliver the the biggest impact in the shortest period of time in terms mm. of grappling with the topic. And I'm wide open in terms of where that takes us. Mm. Okay, I appreciate that. Mr. Gallon? Uh, um, just to, to look forward and, and make some comments yep. and maybe uh, some suggestions to the, to the committee to consider with the council. Um, you know, again, the, the most pressing issue really is, is the uh, ex expiration of the moratorium mm. and, yes. and whether if there's interest, so the first question is, is there interest in uh, continuing that in some form? And if so, are, are the covered areas or uh, types of industry appropriate? Again, right now it's limited to cultivation and Pine Point, uh, as Councilor Sider suggested, odor issues and concerns are not limited to Pine Point anymore. Right. Um, so I think that's, that the council can have some commentary on that. Um, this overarching question of zoning, I, I guess I, you know, from what I can gather, my understanding is that there has been some level of improvement in odor. With that said, there remains, mm. we continue to receive reports of odor. Um, and so that would suggest to me that the problem, in quotes, has not been fixed or solved. Um, and uh, and so I, I, I you know, again, this is my this is me speaking. I, I feel like uh, the individuals who have businesses that emit this odor have made a good faith effort to try to, to address it and solve it. And so I'm, I'm going to presume positive intent and effort. However, it does beg the question then of feasibility. Is it possible to do it? And um, again, that's a question that I think the council should have some discussion on. Um, the, the probably the outside of zoning and permitted uses, I believe that uh, section 11 of the licensing ordinance, which is the enforcement provision, again, I think um, that's some of perhaps Councillor Hamill's comments around, we, we purposefully constructed an enforcement provision that uh, didn't just rely on a single report. And, and again, there was some uh, thought behind that because odor can be fleeting. You know, it can be there one moment and gone the next, not dissimilar from turning down a speaker or shutting off a light and other nuisance complaints. And so we felt that um, having some, a reporting process that was indicative of how pervasive the issue was, was important. Um, 
it also, I think there was also some recognition that uh, in order to chase down an order complaint that requires, we felt it was important for staff to have some verification component to it because it would require enforcement action. And so I think that that was the intention behind it. Mm -hmm. I think if the council wants to revisit what that standard is, um, right now the enforcing entity is the code enforcement department. We can explore whether there are other departments in town which could, could uh, serve as a verification arm of that. Um, again, the, the police department is a, uh, is a, is a department that uh, has some role in good neighbor st style um, complaints. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's something that perhaps the council will want to take up and discuss. Um, but you know, I think that the gist of or a component of the legal guidance is that what you can do with currently permitted uses in zoning, there's some, there's some complexity to that. I think there's some additional complexity to medical caregiver yeah. and, and when they were in place. All of that being equal, enforcement and regula regulation is something within the council's purview. And, and having standards and expectations and regulations that must be complied with is, is something that, no matter what the origin is, is something that I think is within the town's purview to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my, my concern is, um, yeah, and we still get the complaints, and it's very hard to say where they, exactly who's producing it, and, and and whatever and that is very very frustrating to the to the people who live not just immediately adjacent but down a ways depending on weather that's the problem with odor to be honest with you and if i could just ask mr gallagher or i know our code enforcement officer is here if you wanted to weigh in brian what other uh i know portland has an odor uh, enforcement. Are you familiar at all with what they do and how successful they are with it and yep, whatever? I'm, I'm some, we, that was something that we did look at in the working group. Their uh, odor enforcement actually originated from a, a, a poultry processing plant, I believe. Uh, yes. And it was around a certain number of complaints within a certain period of time. Yep. Um, Nine, nine complaints in 24 hours or something to that effect. Um, so nine complaints from nine different people. Okay, so, uh, you know, we knew, and this was the work of the committee, so we were trying to be respectful of the work of the committee. It was really driven by a couple of people. It has not worked, okay? It's really complex. Yeah, I know, I and I, first of all, I want to, uh, if folks don't know, Brian Longstaff received the award of a code enforcement yes. officer of the year, so <laughs> we salute you. And Congratulations. Good work. The other thing I think was very memorable when we were talking about this, I said, are you interested in taking responsibility for this? And he goes, you know, he, was, he emphatically said no, and I, I wouldn't recommend it. He's got so much work to do now based upon the, you know, know. the expansion in town and development yeah. mode. Yeah. That's the last thing we would want to and do. The, and the only reason I asked the question I asked was because odor throughout time. <laughs> It's been one of those issues. I mean, light's pretty easy. You can drive by uh, an establishment, the light's spilling out all over the place and up to the heavens and, and whatever, and that's a bit easier. Not totally easy, but a bit easier. Noise, it's obvious, you know. The noise is coming from G. Marie's barn where Jeffrey's working on something and making a racket. So, you know, that sort of thing. But I order is, seems to be, it's much more nebulous and I, if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, Dawn, when you heard the number nine, you, I'm, I'm thinking back to what you said about why are we putting this on the residents to provide the evidence of, of the, uh, the odor. And it's like, Again, the only answer I can say for that is you've got to weigh the right, you know, a business doing business and a certain amount of odor involved, and it could be fast food, it could be fish processing, it could be cannabis, it could be whatever, um, versus, you know, the people in the neighborhood. And if you're going to take away someone's livelihood, you've got to have good proof for it. And I'm, I know I'm thinking more legally here, I guess. I'm not a lawyer, 
But you know, you got to be careful with that too, and that's the thing that we've got to weigh. Yeah. I, I think we're a long way from taking taking things away. I mean, I yeah. Think, but I, I think the issue is that obviously you can't take the the residents out of the picture. They're no, not, I don't. You know, they're you know they play a role in this, and it's on you know their shoulders to you know to come forward and make a complaint. It's the same thing with uh, you know the good neighbor ordinance as yeah. it relates to noise. You know, right. very hard to. Right. That one's a little bit more measurable. You know, you can measure right. things with a decibel, you know, by decibels. Right. But but it, it, they're very hard to do. Yeah. My, my point on this is if we're going to move forward, we ought to really try to find the shortest distance with the, you know, the best traction. Right. And I, I, I can't go forward without their involvement, but it's got to be, we got to try something different. Yeah. And I, I'd rather go at it from a practical standpoint for me. Okay. For the Oregon standard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we should just cut to the chase. Like yeah. we're we are in a position where we are trying really hard to balance the the being respectful of the businesses that these people have built and the fact that their business is making the quality of life for our residents not what they were hoping for. And we I mean, you want to talk about good faith effort, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I have every I have every confidence that the building owners that worked with us on the cannabis working group, you know, were so responsive and trying to do the right thing by the residents. And I also have faith that the residents are not just being complainers; that this is impacting them on a daily basis, you know, and that and that it really is something that they that they are constantly having to think about and deal with, and it is impacting their quality of life. Mm -hmm. If we are going to do right by the residents who abut these businesses, then I think we are all just coming to the same conclusion, which is the mitigation didn't work. Huh. And the um, attempts to regulate didn't didn't solve the issue for the residents. If those are the conclusions that we're arriving at, then I, I just feel like we're at a point where we, you know, I don't think anybody wants to jump right out and say it, but I, I think we're at an impasse where we have to look at removing the businesses um, to the extent that we're legally allowed. Yeah. I, I guess yep. Yeah, because I've got at the top, if, if anyone's had a chance to look at the memo, Phil was specifically addressing a couple of questions that I had when I met with him. And one was, what if we want, can we put a limit on the number of licenses? Can we say X amount of licenses in town and that's it? The other thing I asked about, can we say we're not going to allow it anymore? We're going to change it. So if we phase out the licenses, What's that look like? And that's where that amortization, I believe, came in. Came in. Um, then, of course, you've got that whole zoning that came to play more so in Pine Point because <coughs> some of the whatever went on over there, but whatever. Um, and 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 I'm speaking just for myself. I mean, I I've been dealing with this since day one on ordinance. Um, and I've come to the point that I think there needs to be a limit on licenses, particularly for uh, cultivation, at least as a start. Um, I can even, I, right now, right today, don't freak out, I'm looking at the audience. I can see phasing out cultivation, potentially, in town. Is, is our, you know, urban areas the place for cultivation or not? I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but that's, you know, those are a couple of things to look at. Yeah, and, and not even necessarily phasing it out town-wide, just looking at zones that have bought residential areas. And I, don't, and I don't know if we would, I don't know if that just generates a different set of, yeah. of issues. I don't know if putting cultivation in our industrial parks is going to lead to odor complaints from neighboring businesses. I mean, that... Well, they're in industrial now. I mean, one thing. Right, but to the, is it the same concentration? Like, 
this is this is where I'm yeah. where I right. you know admittedly I right. just don't have there's a gap in what I know about where the businesses no, right. are located in town and that's where we need to start yeah. where are they what are the numbers I mean, and I know we're kind of jumping to, to possible solutions but I mean as long as we're throwing ideas out you know one is uh, it's probably unlikely for us to be able to roll things back you could have tread over time like you suggested and take other ordinance actions as as April has suggested but maybe there's a way to do it in terms of changing the zoning, you know, convert the residential part of the Pine Point industrial zone to a buffer zone, you know, to you just don't do anything more there and you to let those businesses, you know, that are yeah. there remain. But there's not just, way. but the you issue's know. not in Pine, just in Pine Point. Pardon? The issue's not just Oh, I don't want to, but the idea of like, instead of right. trying to roll something back or take something away or rely only on yeah. tritting, you can say, well, we're just going to create a buffer yeah. area or, you know, uh, right. around the industrial area. So at least there's, I mean, every every week we turn around, people are building closer and closer it's to. It's true. You know, it's true. Areas, no, yeah. you're absolutely you know, right. And more and more. It's called gentrification. Yeah. So. <laughs> just from a ledger's point of view, you have the authority to change zoning. Right. The property owners, there in that instance, when you change zoning to something else, uh, Uses can continue. They can yep. continue as a non conforming use. Right. Uh, and they can continue in perpetuity so long as they don't expand. Right. Um, if you wish to phase them out, that's where the amortization fees that doesn't need to be a component of that. Um, if you're perfectly fine having those businesses that exist at the time you change the zoning continue to as they are, you don't need to do any further. Um, but there is the, there are provisions under the law that couple that. Um, with an amortization approach that phases these businesses on conforming uses out over a period of time. Over time. Mm -hmm. And the, the legal pinning behind that concept is that by changing the zoning and effectively not allowing a business to continue and after they've made the investment, is that that's kind of to a, a taking. That you've right. Taken that uh, away right. from them. And the amortization through a prescribed uh, uh, phasing out, if you will, on such a time frame that allows the business to be aware of it, what's happening and allows them to recoup their investment um, has been upheld through the court systems. Um, I would recommend, it, it does sound as though some land use conversation needs yeah. to be had. Yeah. Um, I would also recommend that you, as the assistant town manager mentioned, that you look back at section 11 of the or licensing ordinance around enforcement and provide perhaps some additional tools because the fact is even if you change the zoning, we know that there'll be existing uses that will continue that could be emanating odors. And so uh, improving Section 11 to allow additional folks to um, assist in the enforcement effort, I think, would be wise. Yeah, and, and we have to remember that the odor, it's not just cannabis, it's anything. It could be fish processing, it could be varnishing, it could be painting it could be you know what i'm saying if it goes beyond the boundaries of a property i think my only my only comment that councillor katarina would be that the, the, there nowhere in our good neighbor ordinance does it reference odor um the the odor focus is it's only in the cannabis, cannabis that, okay thank you for reminding yeah. me of that and so okay. yes I, I we we have received reports even through our online tool of odors that were not cannabis okay. related um, thank you for reminding yeah. me so, I, and perhaps that's another suggestion is to look at whether there needs to be a broader incorporation of odor oh, no. nuisances into our good neighbor ordinance, irrespective of this industry. Uh, I know there's a state law, I just for people's curiosity, I am going to know this just because of my, because being in real estate, that um, there's a state law that protects agriculture. That if you buy next to it a working farm and it stinks, too bad, so sad, regardless of what any odor ordinances are, sure. basically. Um, but anyway, that's that's just an aside. But um, yeah, next steps. I would I would just say that uh, you got to get info. On it strikes me that some attention and likely expansion or extension. And yeah. The expansion of the mortuary moratorium, would, right? Would be wise, which I, I don't expect you to be able to sort this through until no. they have any final decisions in place before the expiration. 
do you see that coming out of ordinance or going just directly to the council? It would go directly. The yeah. committee could make a recommendation yeah. um, on the parameters, whether it's okay. uh, extension only or extension and or expansion to include other areas beyond its current mm -hmm. scope. Realistically, that would need to happen tonight. Yeah. I the think second, it needs to happen. The second meeting in February is not until the 14th. Or I'm second Wednesday, to, rather. Oh, you're talking about the second ordinance committee? Yeah. I, I could do something tonight. That's fine. I just want to be on the same page. Do you want to just I see doing a moratorium on all cannabis throughout town, extend it not just so that it's just, not just Pine Point, um, till June all 30th. All or just cultivation? Just to be cultivation, okay. sorry. Thank you. Okay. Um, cultivation till I was going to say June thirtieth, but is that enough time? I'm looking at. It should be. I mean, I, I think you'll. This committee will, in large part, um, set the pace. So be more term on any my, new my licensing. Sense is the council is uh, is anxious to have this matter before them. So I think, to the extent that you can move through your work and bring it to council, I suspect will be a fairly swift recep reception. My, my sense. And that change is simply, we already, the moratorium already covers cultivation. Does it cover any other It's just Pine licenses? Point right now, right isn't now it? It's just cultivation licenses in Pine Point. It's just the cultivation licenses, okay. You might want to consider extending it to Pleasant Hill. Well, that's what well, I'm that's saying. What you're saying. She was saying townwide. Right, townwide. Well, you know, uh, there are other industrial areas besides Pleasant Hill and Pine Point. That's why I said town wide. Cover the whole. Currently, the Google. only area that I'm aware of that right. has cultivation, any cannabis operations, is in the industrial park itself. And I'm not aware of any complaints that have been produced there. Um, we do have an area of town that is light industrial zone. Is that, is that acceptable to you? Light industrial and industrial is where our yeah. uses for cannabis. That's where it is now. Yeah. And that's the area off uh, the former Beatrice Street. Right. So that's an area that is surrounded by residential uses. Right. So that's an area of concern for I say just town-wide. Just do it town-wide. Yeah, what will happen is we'll put it on a couple of areas and then we'll miss one. And then we'll yeah, yeah, no, I would that's just why say, I'm yeah. just say town-wide. Until June 30th? Yeah. Tom, they can... Uh, I'll make a motion. Well, hold on, I want to, oh, well, I want to sorry, answer Liam's question. The, the council has the ability to repeal and replace moratorium so long as they yes. have the legal ground. So yes. uh, just in terms of the setting the expectation for June 30, um, they can always repeal it earlier. They can always sure. Right. But we have to be working on it. We can't just be doing it. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the purpose of the moratorium is to allow you uh, the proper time to uh, consider the matters and, right. and to make appropriate changes, if you will, and I think you can demonstrate very well that you've got a number of proposals you're advancing through the yep. to council in the meantime. Yep. Okay. So I will make a motion that this committee recommend to the full council a moratorium on cultivation town-wide to extend to June 30th, 2024. Cannabis cultivation. Cannabis <laughs> cultivation. Second. Let's vote. All in favor? That's unanimous. I'm sure that will be well received. Oh, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, just for the chair, um, yeah. do we? I guess we can we can determine this. Do you envision a, a follow up discussion on yes. some of the suggestions from staff at the next yes. ordinance committee? Yes, I want to see where all the licenses are, how many there are, how many were were before that date, December thirteenth, twenty eighteen. How many existed prior? Where are they? Sorry, William. No, 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 <laughs> it's, no. I, I, no, I just think there's some other questions. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. So we'll have that on the agenda for February for. More yeah, and that's discussion. all. And that's all marijuana. Let's do the uh, not just cultivation, but right. manufacturing. Yeah, so that's a wholesale. Yep. Yep. Would you also yeah. like information on uh, odor reports? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And one suggestion I could uh, make here, process-wise, you know, I, we were always kind of asking Liam to do all this work for us, but. I know that you oversaw a committee and April worked on it as well to be having 
folks, you know, a couple of key people who worked on that together come back and say what's happened, good, bad, and ugly, you know, if they're willing to do that. Oh, you mean from that? The, from the work uh, group that you working had? Yeah, except they, that... Or is it, they've been dissolved and well, are no longer really driving the bus here. I mean, I, yeah, they're just Pine Point. And we've also, oh. now we've got Pleasant Hills. Yeah. And I can personally attest to that one because yeah. I called Liam. When I'm over there, I'm like, Liam. <laughs> yeah, I, I think taking a broad scope on this is appropriate. I don't want it to be, you know, only a pine point issue. Right, no. Yeah. So, it's a town um, issue. Yeah. All right. I think that's enough for Liam's homework for tonight. <laughs> is there anything else? Future agenda, we kind of talked about that. Cannabis, I think. I know the next meeting we've got planning. She's coming. Uh, April, uh, People do it all the time. I know. Autumn is coming before us with some of the planning board, as well as the height and landscaping, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and I do know that, you know, uh, uh, she's got a, a full schedule, so we've got to be prepared for each. Each time we meet, we're going to have stuff from the yep. planning board and then transportation at some point, yep. probably in this first quarter. Yes, yeah, sure. coming right up. So, just so we'll know. So, cannabis will be the ongoing, but we've got that June 30th now because I can't imagine this won't pass council. Um, um, so, what we'll plan on then the the um, landscaping standards yep. and also perhaps uh, with the assistance of the town engineer come back, uh, the issue that was already discussed last year at ordinance around, I think, I think it's the traffic ordinance or is it the parking? They're all contained in the same ordinance. They're all in the same ordinance, yeah. I'd like to bring a, a sweeping yep. uh, amendment yep. to you just to be efficient. Yep, that's fine. Okay, anything else? We'll endeavor to have that in yep. the February meeting. Okay, and our next meeting is, did we read? Oh my God, it's Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> February 14th. I'll bring tape bags in front of our seats. And go I'll and bring stuff. chocolate oh, candy. <laughs> <laughs> um, motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? All right, we're done. Thank you.